said this trip's about food. There's nothing but food in that thing. My uh, uncle pulls that canoe, the bathtub, and I think it earns its name right there. We can't seem to find the thunderbox. We're off to another trip. Going on Gonquin this time, access number 22, Acre, which is on Grand Lake. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, six portages. They're not going to be very long. The longest one is actually only 675, which is not bad. And uh, our end destination is into Cork Lake, which uh, I've never been there. Uh, my brother's never been there. He's the one who's bringing me, or I'm bringing him actually. And uh, we're just going to sit there for three nights, four days, and chill out and you know, have a rest from that tomogamy trip that we just did. It's September, so we're gonna have hopefully no bugs and some good weather. It is raining right now, but the rest of the weather looks good and looking forward to it. Well, my car is officially muddy now. Uh, we're on the, the uh, gravel road that goes into Acre. And if you look outside, uh, all the trees are already starting to change. Like some trees are full on change color, it's crazy. It's gonna make for some uh, good pictures. Looking forward to that. The destination is on your right, Algonquin Grand Lake, Acre Access Point. Arrived. Yay! <laughs> Arrived! We're here at Acre Access Point. Having some food. Anybody else do this? Have some uh, nice home cooked meal before heading out. They have a theater here, which is kind of cool. Did not know that. Oh, that's lovely. This is my brother. Hey. He's going to be on the trip with me. So expect his face. <laughs> This face. So we're just in here eating lunch while it continues to rain. Hopefully uh, it stops raining in a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, we're looking forward to this trip because we get to base camp and we're gonna go around to different places. We're gonna go to like the Barren Canyon, the uh, water park that's uh, called High Falls, one of the High Falls in, on, in Algonquin. Uh, we're gonna go check that out. Uh, we're gonna look at some pictographs, hopefully, that's on Grand Lake. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna adventure around. We're not just gonna sit around camp. Um, maybe for half of one day, we'll sit around camp. But yeah, a lot of it's gonna be about the food too. This guy brings way too much food. Don't tell him. And uh, <laughs> so he's, he's actually, I, I have no idea what we're having which is kind of cool because every camping trip uh, I'm fully immersed in what we're bringing and and all the meal planning and everything. So I'm really looking forward to some new recipes and some new enlightening to us and to uh, new things that we can try out on some trips. Starting with your lunch. Mm. What do we got here? Leftovers. <laughs> Looks like some sort of, is that? It was a pasta dish and I added some tuna. Oh. Yeah. Looks yummy. It is, it is delicious. He likes to stay healthy. I don't. <laughs> oh man. I just got this thing clean from tomorrow. <sighs> hey, make sure your pack is nice and safe, eh? I said this trip's about food. There's nothing but food in that thing. That's a 55 liter dry bag, full. It's not even gonna fit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that'll fit. My poor bag. <laughs> <laughs> We're here at beautiful Acre Access. You can see a little hardwood stand right up there. It's all changing color. Time's weighing the packs. So this is the food pack. 48 pounds of food. Okay. <laughs> 
the blue pack, which is all the stuff. 60, 67, 68. Not too bad. Lighter than the tomogamy trip, that's for sure. And now, the canoe. What's it say? About 90 ish. 90 pounds wet. Jeez. Nice weather update here from Ontario Parks. So, we're right here. And we're gonna go, there's some pictographs right, right where that H is. And we're gonna go all the way down here. And we're gonna go up and around this way. We don't wanna do this super long portage here. So we're just gonna go up and over and into Cork. We're all done weighing. Got all the gear set up. Just checking on the car and then we'll be off. Headed down the lake to the first portage. Rain is finally let off but it will be a muddy and wet trip for sure today. <laughs> We're on the water. So we're here at the pictographs area. We're gonna do some searching and see if we can find any. Even if we don't find any, it's pretty nice. Nice big rock slab. This is really cool. Oh, check those out. Huh? Yeah, there it is. It's pretty cool. How old that might be. There might be more here, but there's uh, like all this lichen that's on all, all the rocks. It might be covering a lot of it, so. It's pretty cool to see though. Just remember when you're at places like this to never like touch anything. Don't, don't disturb it. Just take pictures and then paddle away. What you seeing up there? Checking out a bald eagle. Looks like there's just one. Alright, so we're at the first portage. We're going around this little dam. It's a shorty. Putting his rain pants away. Yep. Getting a uh, bunch of wasp landing on me. <laughs> 90 pounds of fun. <laughs> Once it starts going, you can't stop it. <laughs> There's a sign here. Basically says there's lots of bear activity around here. Just a warm up. Well, there's the entrance to Stratton Lake. There goes the blue sky. It's uh, starting to get a little dark again. I just put my sunglasses on. make it through that but we're not gonna try it's a 40 meters something like that Come 
my uh, uncle calls that canoe the bathtub. And I think it earns its name right there. Welcome to St. Andrews. Turned out to be a beautiful day. Clouds are moving quickly though. It's gotten very gusty. We're being chased. Here comes the weather. The first real portage of the day. It's around a bunch of set of rapids and falls. It's a beautiful area of Algonquin. Lots of rocks and uh, lots of sandy beaches too, which is cool. But yeah, look at this. Josh was easy. Hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it when alternate routes are available. Bit of a steep descent here. It sounds like there's a pretty big falls coming up. stumbled upon an old burn. Not super old. Could be only a few years old. You can even see on this island here, the fire reached and uh, burnt all the trees that were on it. That's crazy how it's, it's just all dead. Nothing living. The bushes are just starting to grow up again. Well, we went to the wrong portage. <laughs> There's actually two right next to each other. So hopefully the other one's over there somewhere. It's quite literally right next to it. First attempt. Contrary to proper belief, I actually do portage canoes. <laughs> Textbook. Oh, well. This one's not too bad. It goes uphill. I've been going downhill, like really downhill. Now we're going uphill again. Here we are on the uh, portage into Ooze Lake. Probably see him behind me here. The big red canoe. Very easy portages so far. Just a light sweat. And uh, lots of people around, so no wildlife. But what can you do? Welcome to Ooze Lake. All right, we're on the 650 meter, 40 meter, not sure, uh, into Opalescent Lake. 
looking good so far. Typical Algonquin Portage. It's been getting very, uh, quite windy, but it may be because we're, we're kind of in small lakes that are like funneling the, the wind down it. So we'll see what it's like when we get to our destination lake. Thanks for good paddling though, we have a tail in the whole way. <laughs> a little need of a repair. <laughs> Welcome to Opalescent Lake. Well, a little bit of snack time. We heavily contemplated having a marshmallow, but we thought that trail mix would be a bit healthier. Well, coming up on the last portage of the day, 6.75. Looks like this lake's being held up by a giant beaver dam. It's pretty old. It's kind of cool. Alright, let's get this over with. Get in here. Not a dam. It's actually just a big slab of rock that goes up to the lake. And uh, it's, just, it's just kind of like a big log jam at the top of it. Very old. Very tall. Yes, we're talking about him. Very interesting topography here. A lot of uh, lichen. Very barren. On the uh, portage sign it said 730, 130 meters. Jeff's map said uh, about 600, so hopefully Jeff's map is right. Well, we made it. Whew. Look at that giant rock wall over there. It was a hard one. It was uh, very like mushy and, but you're like walking on rock most of the time, like this, like big piece of rock, moss, moss, and you're walking on that. But then every now and then there'd be like a dip in the rock and there'd be a bunch of um, like dirt. And that's where all the muckiness was. So, oh. <clears throat> Just swallowed a black fly. <coughs> Alright, so we're at the first campsite. Checking it out. Lots of things to cook with. Lots of grills. And then, yeah, we'll have to look around for some spots for a tent. We are going to check out the other site. Because it's, it's literally like right over there, so. Um. Yeah, and then we're gonna get the tarp set up because it's getting dark again quickly and the wind's really picking up again. So we found the thunder box. It's kind of like on a creek. Like they jacked it up on some rocks. And yeah, there's, a, there's running water underneath there. See more of the water there. But to get to it, basically we've got to walk through a swamp. Well, that'd be kind of inconvenient and it's quite a ways away from the campsite it's probably a two or three minute walk from the campsite so we're gonna go check the other one out and maybe it will be a better situation all right campsite number two on cork lake well, it's very
very pretty at this site. Somebody uh, was cooking something big, I guess. But doesn't seem to be any grills on this site. They all seem to be on the other one. So I look for the Thunderbox now and some tenting options. It's very rocky here. It's, it's not much. Not much place to that's flat and even. There's always rocks and roots. It's kind of like tomogamy right now. <laughs> well, we've been walking around for a couple minutes now, and we can't seem to find the thunderbox. I thought I smelt it at one point, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's a lot of blowdowns in here, like big blowdowns. Stuff like this. It's just so rocky that the roots have nothing to hold on to, so they just fall over. We can't find it anywhere. This seems like a grim reminder of Vario. Vario. Not sure how you say it. <laughs> Our Thunderbox basically looked like that. Wow, look at these big blowdowns. Like, they're just going all the way. And these have been cut a long time ago, too. They're everywhere. Look at them all. Oh, wait. I found it. Ha <laughs> ha! da ba It looked like the last uh, Thunderbox was kind of destroyed by a blowdown from many years ago, which is kind of uh, scary in the fact that you wake up in the morning and your thunderbox is destroyed. That, that would have been quite the night though. So we are very happy we found it. Look at that. Giant tree in the background that's fallen down. <laughs> Looks like it's new too. All the dirt dug up here. Sweet. We're gonna stay here. It's a much better site. Uh, more sheltered. The other one was very uh, uh, rocky and rooty. I didn't really like him very much. I mean, like, he's my brother, but we don't like each other. So I'm sending him off to the other site. Bye. He's actually going to get a grill because it seems like people have taken all the grills and put it onto the other side, so. I'm gonna get set up though first. Get a tarp up. It might rain. Not a bad setup here. They even have like a makeshift table made out of rock. And a pretty good view. Still not as nice as the other one. All right, here's where big decisions are made. Gotta pick one of these guys to cook on for the next three days. Do some testing, see which ones are the sturdiest, and then uh, go from there. All right, picked up a couple grills. Also scored a roaster from marshmallows or sausages. Pretty useful. I'm gonna head back to the other site now. Enjoy the view. He's back. I got the grill. He got the grill. Working on the tarp. It's a bit of a windy situation. I haven't been filming it because I've been holding on with two hands most of the time. Okay, so we have the tarp set up, but it's really windy, so I'm gonna have to like bring it down to the ground. I thought I could deal with it, but it's too windy right now. So here's what I have. Just a rough line. I actually have this line going down there, coming back up into that point, over to that tree, and then back up to the other side. So there's actually three points of contact on this side, which is still getting destroyed by wind. So. I have to lower these way down here until basically the tarp is on the ground to survive the wind. The wind's blowing the other way. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so this is what I got for the current conditions. I'm trying to use every single point possible. I've got a zigzag going across here. Uh, even like these side points are used. Everything else is used. Hopefully it stays. It's still just as windy. I don't know if it's gonna get better or not. A little bit of rain coming. Had to put everything in the cover. Get some wood ready. Feel it now. We got the tent set up. We got the tarp set up. We got some fire going. It's still really windy. Some big wind gusts coming from over there. Uh, but yeah, hopefully be eating soon because we're both very hungry. All right, it's chef time. This is water boiling. What are we having tonight? Grabbing uh, some burgers with quinoa and asparagus. So we got like way too much asparagus. <laughs> Can't hurt. Way too much quinoa. And what looks like now a giant patty that we will divide up. <laughs> so it's starting to get dark. The wind has died down quite a bit. And uh, I almost forgot about the bear hang. So I'm looking around now, trying to find a decent, uh, decent branch. Everything's really tall, like really far up. So it's gonna take a lot of looking around to try to find something and something strong enough to take the weight of all the food that we have. We have quite a bit of food. <laughs> okay, so a couple years back, uh, Tom and I were on North T East on uh, actually one of the sites that we visited for Mark in the Park season one. And uh, we put our food up for the day because we, were, we went out day tripping. And uh, over time, the bag ate through the uh, through the rope, and it basically look at this. It almost broke through in two places. So we string up our food in a different way now. We use beaners instead of rope right on the on the piece, like on the bag. This time I'm gonna try out this pulley. Save the, the tree kind of thing, it'll be easier to pull up, take down by yourself if one of us is up earlier. And uh, yeah, give it a try. It does require a second piece of rope, so it's the only downside, but uh, hopefully this doesn't happen again because we would have came back to our food on the ground probably things broken in it because it fell so far. Well, dinner update. How's it going? Almost there. A couple more minutes. What did I forget? The of glove. Yeah. I don't think I have any more hair in my hands. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen a burger that thick. <laughs> Here we go. 
Oh, my jaw hurts. Mmm. This tastes good. What is it? Italian sausages. Yeah. Or sausage meat and uh, beef. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's good. So it's got like the flavoring of the sausage, but also get mostly beef in there. Oh, this is well deserved. Mmm. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. Part two. Some quinoa. Or should I say a lot of quinoa? And part three. Asparagus. I think I'm uh, suffering from camper syndrome right now. Everything just tastes so good. Mm. So we just finished uh, supper. Doing some dishes, filtering some water. And it uh, started to rain. So getting to use the tarp again for the second time. Or third time. Maybe third time. But yeah. Just doing some dishes here. Listening to the sound of the, the rain on the turf. Drying out some socks. It's a good night in Algonquin. I don't know if it actually is, but that might be a cockroach. Oh, we got a mouse. We got a mouse. And he's gone. Ew. It's picking up again. Rain off and on. Now really on. get interesting. Why is shut? Shut? No. Oh, man. <laughs> Guess I'll be back. You know what time it is. It's more time. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> These are the biggest marshmallows you can buy. Legally. <laughs> Jumbo. <laughs> Let's look to the name. Oh! Oh, rodent. Where is he? Let's find the stick. Oh, there he is. Get, oh. get. I want a s'more too. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. How's it going? <laughs> Marshmallow is nearing completion. Oh. Take it. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Holy cow. <laughs> you have to use your finger to get that inner. Oh. Okay, go slowly. Sorry. You don't s'more like we s'more. Not even to the graham cracker yet. It's gonna take a while. <laughs> Where is it? It was biting my toe earlier. Didn't know the bit. He thought it was a peanut or something. Huh. It's nibbling. It's a pretty big peanut. Look how long its tail is. Turn around, little guy. Somebody's definitely fed you. <laughs> a little, little bit fat. Very fat. And he's not afraid of you. Just... Is 
such a little fatty. Been feasting all summer long, haven't you? Well, that was a... It was a hard day. Getting back into the groove of things. Lifting that uh, 90 pound canoe is never fun or easy. Can definitely feel it right now. Tomorrow we're gonna go to the Bering Canyon, somewhere I've wanted to be for many years. So it'll be fun, it'll be good to see it and experience it. I've seen pictures and videos and wanted to see it for myself, so we're going there tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go for a, a big hunt for wood because it's been picked clean over the over the summer. So we're gonna do a little paddle around, pick up a bunch of wood, maybe for the rest of the trip kind of thing. Yeah, it's a good day. It's good to be back in Algonquin. Uh, we're looking to go to the Barren Canyon. This is what we were dealing with yesterday. It felt significantly heavier in the back. Mm, this might be the problem. Is it runnable? It's your wrist tolerance. 